Hi everybody, Zeev Simon here. I'm the creator of Surgical Master, the surgical training for dentists. Uh, welcome to another quick lecture on digital simulation. And I'll talk about this process as we use it for aesthetic crown lengthening. So a common question that I'm being asked is, how can we decide, how can we determine the ideal gum margin? Where should the gingival margin be, especially when we are planning to remove some gum tissue, reduce the gum display, improve teeth proportions, and give the pa patient all in all a better smile? How can we decide on the ideal gingival margin? So there are definitely several options to do this, and I would start by measuring the teeth length and width and determining the proportion. So we will aim for a proportion uh, of the width and the length that is about 75 to 80 percent. That would give the patient a normal tooth proportion that looks aesthetic. Based on that, we can already decide on the gingival margin. Now I also encourage you to do more things, actually I encourage you to do all of these things. Uh, take impressions, get study models, and, and literally study them, and mark down on the study model where you think the gingival margin should be. Now, it also helps to work with a lab technician, creating a diagnostic wax up, and uh, potentially also doing this in the patient's mouth, what, what we call a mock-up. You'll actually add composite, you don't have to etch and bond, and you'll freehand add to the tooth structure, actually also on the gum level, and create the ideal tooth proportion. So all these things help, and I, I would, again, encourage you to do all of the above. There's another step that can help you, and that's called digital simulation. I use Photoshop, and I use the um, um, you know less involved version that is called Photoshop Elements. It's relatively inexpensive. You can uh, go to Adobe Photoshop and download the, the software. You can actually try it out first and see if it works for you. And I wanted to show you how this works uh, practically when I try to do a digital simulation. So let's go to um, a patient folder. And what you'll do, you'll take two photos. One, a photo of the patient's smile, and another photo of the retracted view. So let's start with the retracted view. You'll basically open it with Adobe Photoshop Elements Editor. And then you'll see the picture already imported in. What you'll do next, you'll go to the filter section and choose distort and a sub option called liquify. So I really use Photoshop element elements only for the liquify option. What it does, it takes the picture and it turns all the pixels into gel. Okay, if you like to zoom in here with the Mac, we're pressing command plus. So we're going to zoom in a little bit, and we, you see we have this circular brush. You can change the size of it uh, on the right where it says Tool Options. You'll press, press Brush Size and make it a little bit bigger. And what this will do, as you uh, click your mouse, it'll start moving the gum margin. Now, it makes it in a very seamless way, uh, as if you're doing a crown lengthening, and you can now take this information study it, also share it with your patient and see what they think. So what you, you can do if you want to um, you know, change the incisal edges, that works as well. If you think it's appropriate, you can move the gum margin in different directions. You can, if you made a mistake, you can either undo and uh, bring it down again. You can also do crown lengthening on posterior teeth and it's going to really make you realize, make you understand how the final result will look like, or maybe it'll make you decide not to do it because it doesn't look good on the simulation. So once you're done with your, and this is just a totally hypothetical uh, example, once we, we are done with the crown lengthening, the digital crown lengthening, I uh, press OK, and then we save as. So in the Mac, it's Shift-Command-S, we'll save as the image number, and we'll add simulation to it in the file name. You'll see in a second why this is important. So you save it, save it in the maximum quality, maximum resolution, okay? We always go for the highest quality possible. And now we'll take the second picture, which is the patient's uh, smile, the zoom in on the patient's smile, we'll do the same thing, 
And now we have to go again to filter. You already have a, a shortcut here, but let's let me show you the whole way. Distort, liquefy. Now you'll have to use a smaller brush size so we don't distort the lip too much. And even here you can start changing the gum level in a very seamless way. Okay, now if you made a mistake, and that can happen, you basically undo it. Okay, it's all in the digital wor it, world, it doesn't even hurt the patient, and the information and the knowledge you're getting from doing the simulation helps you a lot. Okay, so you can change that. Now, one of the limitations when you do a, a digital simulation on the patient's smile is that you, as you lengthen the teeth, you may, dist and I'm just exaggerating, you may distort the lip and that's obviously not a good thing because it will you know, basically defeat the purpose. Uh, in the next video, I'll show you how, can, how we can address that. Basically, what we need to do is crop the lip out and replace it, but it's a little bit more uh, complicated. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cancel it, and I'm going to go again into uh, liquefy and redo the process. Okay, Do the digital crown lengthening all the way in the back and spend as much time as you need. I'm just doing it relatively quick for the uh, demonstration purposes. Okay, and then we'll press OK. We'll save as the image file and add simulation. Press save and save to the maximum quality. Okay, and what you want to do is go back to the original folder. Now you'll have the original files plus the simulation. So what I like to do, and I do this in front of patients, so they um, you know, enjoy this a lot and learn a lot and know what the options are. I open up two of those files together. Okay, so we can look at them side by side. So this is the original view. And then we can see the simulation. So we basically toggle between the preoperative and the digital simulation. And then you can tell if this is something you'd like to pursue and uh, I can tell you now that the patients are loving it. They are um, very excited and motivated to move forward with the procedure, and your case acceptance uh, will increase. Same thing with the smile photo. Open both files and basically toggle between the two, and then you can uh, help the patient visualize what the crown lengthening will look like. Okay, so that's basically very, very simple using Photoshop elements to create a digital simulation, and help you make decisions where the ideal gum margin would be. So I hope this information was useful to you and that you can now go ahead and do a digital simulation for your patients and uh, eventually perform a better procedure. So until the next time, all the best. Zeev Simon here from Surgical Master.